Oh, yeah. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Chad from Real Life English, where we believe that listening to podcasts is a fun, natural, effective, or delicious. Sometimes even a little roasted to perfection. Way to learn English. So download this podcast and listen to us while you're stuck in traffic, waiting in line to use the bathroom, charging your cell phone, or leaving a tip. Even flipping some flapjacks. I am joined here today in the studio with the two other real life fellas. First of all, Mr. V himself. Ethan, what's up, man? Not much. How you doing? Pretty good. Why do they call you Mr. V again? Because I got all the vocabulary under my belt. Oh, under your belt? Yeah. What do you mean by under your belt? It means that I... I and, it means that I've, that I've, that I've got it um, like really down. I've got it in my brain. I don't know why it's under my belt. What, do, what does it mean to have something down? <laughs> you've, got, you've got it down. That's another way to say it. That you've you've got it. Uh, you've got it really mastered. well um, mastered. Yeah, exactly. We haven't introduced you yet, Justin. You should just uh, keep it down if you know <laughs> what I mean. Keep it down. Pipe down. Keep it down over there. Yeah, pipe down. There you go. Uh, <laughs> well, it's great to know that Mr. V, you're here with all the vocabulary from under your belt today. <laughs> um, and also, Mr. Murray, Justin, how are you today, Justino? Uh, yeah, good to be here, and I'm doing pretty well. Yep. So if Ethan's Mr. V, what's your nickname? I think I'm J-Man, maybe, from what I understand, right? Okay, okay. What does the J stand for? It stands for Justin. <laughs> oh, that's pretty ordinary. I thought it stood for for jokey. <laughs> <laughs> jokey. <laughs> yeah, could do. Juvenile. He's got, a, he's got a lot of jokes under his belt. Mm, there you go. Jokes under his belt. So, uh, yes, fellas, uh, great to be here, hanging out again. We are all on different parts of the globe. Me being down under, uh, Justin being up over. <laughs> and uh, Ethan being just kind of around the middle area. Over, over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a, a very special podcast for you guys today. We've just been planning it. And what are we going to be teaching all these people today, Justin? We're going to be talking about restaurant English. The entire experience, the vocabulary, the cultural notes, and everything you need to know to go to a restaurant to order, to complain, and to get everything you need. And to not be a jackass. And why uh, you, you have a lot of, I think both you guys have uh, some experience in the hospitality area, and you're all, we're all language learners and have lived outside of our, our own countries for extended periods of time. Why is this an issue, and why should people really learn some of this vocabulary and just well, these you... scenarios of ordering you want to communicate, you want to eat, and you want to you want to be harmonious with the with the worlds that you're you're going to, right? So when in Rome, Ethan, Mr. V, do as the Romans do. When in Rome, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. What, what does, does that, that mean? mean? That means that when you're in to, a, yeah. that when you're in a new place, you should do as the locals do. You should imitate the locals. But this is one of those expressions when people don't need to finish it. They'll just say, when in Rome, mm -hmm. and they won't finish it because it's implied, the rest of it. Yeah. It's kind of like also can be about trying new things because that's what people in the place where you're at do, uh, do things. So it's kind of like well, maybe go to a restaurant in uh, Australia. Maybe they serve kangaroo. You wouldn't normally eat kangaroo, but when in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess you can also use that expression like if you're in a in a country and they have some kind of a, 
a custom, something that they do there that you find kind of peculiar? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a little bit outside your own comfort zone. And you're like, ah, well, when in Rome, it's 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 not maybe it's not accepted in your own country, but when you go to a different, very, more liberal place, you're like, well, when in Rome, I'm just gonna do this anyway. Yeah, like in the United, United States, I would usually be a very polite driver, but uh, here in Thailand, it's just it kind of rules um, the, the laws of the road. There, there aren't really any, so, you know. What, what in happens Thailand, in Thailand? What happens in Thailand? Stays, stays in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> I think that one comes from Vegas, right? What happens yeah. in Vegas stays in Vegas. Exactly. So pe people use that in other places, too. What's with, with a, a lawless road traffic system? It sounds a little bit like Mad Max. You know, that's that's Australian style. A little bit, yeah. That's how that's how it is here. There's people with like riding around with like chainsaws and maces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is a mace? A mace is it's like one of those uh, sticks with a chain and a spiky ball at the end. That's like a very medieval weapon. Yeah, yeah. You might be like cool. swinging around your head. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> sad noise. <laughs> That's just an answer machine. Is that an Sorry, answer guys. machine, Justin? Yes, yes. It's a, it's a I didn't know people what was that? had those. It was an answer machine. Is that an was my brother machine? calling? Yes. <laughs> Justin, Justin cool. uh, lives in the 90s. As you can see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe... Uh, you might want to turn off your beeper as well, just in case someone, uh, you know, <laughs> sends to, you a, me a beeper, tries to page a beep message, <laughs> <laughs> or your fact, maybe maybe your fax machines in the background there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, there there is a fax machine here, so <laughs> people still use fax machines. Do you have a telegram sure, machine they do. as well? <laughs> Morse, okay, maybe so some Morse code. So coming uh, back to the topic okay, yeah. at hand today, making a reservation at a restaurant. How do we make a reservation? Right, like right now, Ethan, if you want to make a reservation at a restaurant, what do you do? What do you say? I would uh, pick up my, my phone and I would ring them. I would ring the restaurant. You would dial maybe the restaurant's number, right? Yeah. And I dial, would yeah. probably dial get connected to... the numbers? Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. If you're on YouTube, you can see that. Um, and you might get connected to the host or hostess, I think is usually who makes reser who takes reservations. So I guess you would make a reservation, the host or hostess would take the reservation, and you would tell them basically um, what time you want to be at the restaurant and uh, how many people are going to be in your party. So that basically means the group of people that you'll be dining with we call a party. And uh, what else might you have to tell them? Maybe if you have any children, you need a booster seat. Anything like that? You what? So would you, you like yeah, to? You uh, would we like to reenact this scenario? Like if you were to, to ring me, and <laughs> I will be the I'll be the host of the restaurant. The host with the most. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say that though? Like if I was a host, I'd be like, um, "Hey, this is a uh, Chad's." Chow down mix. What's up? How can I help you? <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Justin do the honors. Uh, yeah, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm looking for a reservation. A party of eight. Okay. Um, what, what time would you like to make the re reservation? Do you have any space at 8 o'clock? Oh, I could probably fit you in at 8.30. Is that okay? Okay. Um, I need a booster seat because we have a couple of children and and Mr. V, he's kind of short. <laughs> what is a uh, a couple of children? Is that two? That's that's kind of a bit vague. A couple of children. So just the one booster seat seat for two children. Two booster seats. Okay. Gotcha. And and uh, one adult that needs one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are there any? Uh, I mean, like, are there uh, are there any? Um, Sorry, we, we can finish the uh, the 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 uh, the uh, what do you call this? 
you just hanging up. You're not going to give them a polite. Uh... No, no, I'm just, I'm just giving a, um, a side note here. Like sometimes you might want to ask some specific uh, questions about their menu, right? Like if they're, do you have like much of a vegetarian or a vegan option? And, and maybe you can ask certain questions about, um, do you have like if you're making the reservation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you have any specials pre menu? You might ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you guys do this a lot in the U.S., but off here, I think a lot of restaurants are uh, BYOB. Bring your own beer. Yeah, that definitely would not well, fly it's just like in the B United States. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? So what you yeah. have here a lot here in Australia is many restaurants. They they're a restaurant and they serve food at nighttime, obviously, but they don't have a liquor license. So um, it's BYOB. So like you can bring your own alcohol, and they just charge like if it's a bottle of wine, the restaurant will charge like five dollars as a cork fee, mm -hmm. which is like to open the bottle. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah, the, the U.S. They want to do that. They want to serve their. Uh, they want to sell their own alcohol, and there's very strict okay. alcohol laws in the United States. Like you can't um, you can't walk on the street with an open container, different things like that. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, okay. So let's get back to the uh, subject at, at hand, as Justin suggested earlier. So we're making the reservation over the phone. I think that's pretty much it, really. Just I would like to book a table, to reserve a table, a party of, party meaning the amount of people there. Or mm -hmm. you could say a table for would be an alternative way to say that. Yeah. True. The same interaction. If you okay. just go, you don't always need to be, make a reservation. If, like uh, Justin said, if you're like a larger party, you probably want to make a reservation. Or if it's a popular restaurant and you know that, you probably want to make a reservation um, at least two hours or a day ahead. But if it's not, then, or if it's not like Friday or Saturday night, you might just do a walk in. Mm, a walk in. Yeah, a walk in. Yeah. What does so that mean? You, it basically means you just walk in without a reservation and you take your chances. Sometimes you have to put down your credit card number, though. Actually, really, and they, they actually charge a fee if you if you cancel or if you don't if you don't show, if you're a no show, if you oh. don't show up. I've never heard of that, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe I guess that would work for a fancy restaurant. I could see doing that. So, what is a no show? A no show is when somebody doesn't show up. Like, if you're a doctor, mm -hmm. you can have a no show patient. The patient doesn't show up. What does show up no mean? To arrive, right? Yeah. Not to be confused with show off. Yeah. Show off. Show up is, is to come like somewhere when you're expected for an appointment or a no, that's show up. reservation. Yeah, show up, I said. Oh, I was, I was saying show off is different. Show off is to show off your skills at something. What if I said I really showed you up? <laughs> Ooh, showed you up. <laughs> If you show somebody up, that means I did one better than you. I, I proved that I like if it's a basketball game, like one on one, and me and Justin were playing. And I showed him up. It means that I played better than him. I showed my skills were more advanced than his. Chad, you're always trying Especially to. Especially if he was. You're always trying to one up me. You're quite the, the showman. Kind of the same thing. Yeah, one up is yeah. like when when somebody is always like uh, when they say something, you're always trying to be one better than that person. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, oh, um, yeah. oh, e Ethan published, you know, twenty articles last year or last, you know, last year, and I'm like, oh, I published twenty five. <laughs> you well, Chad, you, Chad, you lift, you lift, um, two hundred and fifty pounds when you go to the gym. Man, I, I lift two hundred and seventy. <laughs> no one likes to show off, Justin. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to the restaurant vocabulary, and um, the next thing, uh, I mean, like, obviously, the, you have the walk-in, we have the make a reservation. What about when you actually get there? You, you mentioned on the phone you often talk to the host or the hostess. Yeah. What and is the general scenario when arriving? That's the same. You'd be, like, greeted probably by the host or hostess. It's like, um, probably, you know. There, there, and something too we could maybe talk about real quick is just like the culture in the United States and restaurants. They are very polite, and I've seen 
it depends obviously where you go, but um, I've seen outside the U.S. It's not always necessarily the case because um, the, it's not necessarily like a part of the job to be like super hospitable. So when you arrive, they'll probably ask you similarly as we did in the, on the phone, like um, party, like party of, are you like how how many people are in your party, or how many people do you need a table for? Uh, they might tell you that there's a wait. That like there's about it's going to be about 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, um, and they might like have an area where you can sit down and wait, or you can maybe wait at the bar. So they might ask you, would you like a drink while you wait? Or you might already your friends might already be there, so you might say I'm meeting a friend, or you might tell them, um, you know, your friend's name. You might say I'm like with party of five under Justin. They might give you a beeper. Under too. why do you say under? Not sure because uh, it'd be the reservation is under, right? You make it the yeah, reservation like un is under, under someone's, someone's name. name. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so you can so so you'd say if you're at the restaurant and the, and the uh, hostess, if you're there meeting someone, the hostess will say, Who is the table under? Mm -hmm. It's like whose name is designated to that table. And you might uh, also, depending on the establishment, on the restaurant, they might ask you if you're dining in or taking away. Some places will have a takeaway service, so you might call before to order your food um, and get it to go. Or you know, you might be actually eating at the restaurant. So if it's the type of place that often does takeaway meals, they might ask you that when you first walk in. Do they call it takeout? Takeout, takeaway, to go. I think it's uh -huh. all the same jazz. At the, at, at the end of the, your meal, it's actually, um, can I take it to go, right? Generally, can right? I get it? Can I get it to go? Uh huh. Or can I get it to take away? Yeah. So awesome. You have the hostess, right? And then you have your the, which is often known as the greeter, right? Or the the yeah. host too. It's like one the of the few things in English. The greeter. The greeter, the person who greets you, right? Oh, greet. Okay. <laughs> I think you said like greed, greeter. like he's a greeter. <laughs> <laughs> American American tea, and so your yeah. server will come along. Your server, which you know, it might be the waiter or the waist waitress, right? Oftentimes, you might encounter the bartender or the busboy. Like Ethan is, he's a busboy. He was a busboy for a while, right? <laughs> I'm not any longer. I was. It was my first job when I was in high school. I was a busboy for uh, one summer, which I, so I didn't really a, return. <laughs> what's the difference between a busboy and a waiter? A busboy, they, they usually are kind of more behind the scenes. Uh, so they are, you know, they might be like filling up glasses, they might be serving drinks, um, and they are cleaning up after clearing the tables. Meal. Clearing tables, yeah. So, um, in which the verb is actually bussing tables to bus tables is like another way to say to clean them. So that's why it's a busboy or a bus, I guess a bus girl it would be as well if it were a, if it were a woman. Okay, what other what other um, roles do they have at the restaurant? Have the chef, the head chef, the sous chef, okay. the bartender. Okay. Bar back. The bar back is like the sous chef at the bar, right? Yeah, the 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 right hand man of the bar, the bartender, the right hand woman. Mm -hmm. Which is it's interesting to look at like the, the the names for all the different roles in a restaurant. Some of them have a masculine and feminine. Some of them don't. So bartender doesn't have a feminine. It's just um, the same word for a woman or a man, or a chef is the same, but then you have like waiter, waitress, host, hostess, busboy, busgirl. What's the person um, who sells wine at the restaurant? Sommelier. Uh -huh. if it's a, that's only if it's like a really high class joint. Really swanky place? Yeah. So it's uh, wait, wait. swanky. High class, joint. you said. You said, yeah, and you said yeah, joint, exactly, a high class joint. Yeah. The joint is like another way to um, refer to yep. a restaurant, right? A place. Like you might go to right? a, a hamburger mm -hmm. joint or a, a swanky joint. It's actually a marijuana cigarette, too. <laughs> Just so you guys yeah, know. Not to be confused with that. If you're in Colorado looking for a joint, you might or be. Or in Washington. Uh, it could also be. It's legal here, too. Could also be like your, your, the, the, Joints of your 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 hands, like your, your wrist is a is a joint. Your body bodily mm -hmm. joints. 
Like um, crack the joints in your knuckles. Yeah. But <laughs> so in this case, you can also say like, oh, could I say it more informally and say, oh, we're going over to Chad's joint? Yeah. I don't but know that I wouldn't mean your house. That would be that like Chad's, that would be that like Chad's restaurant for me. I would, I would understand mm -hmm. that as like, like if there's like a restaurant called Chad's, then I'd say like <laughs> Chad's joint is like that restaurant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Swanky, it could also be my marijuana again? cigarette. Swanky, swanky means, is like fancy. Now, do you pronounce it swanky or swanky? I thought it was swanky. Uh, maybe I'm mis okay. I I could be mispronouncing it because I'm not, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not swanky enough to know that word. <laughs> it's kind of like a. Is it Yiddish? It could be, but it's kind of like a. There's like a certain a certain uh, sarcasm to it, isn't there? Like a little bit of like, uh, you know, it's it's not like what you would actually formally call a fancy place. Well, it's somebody kind of who actually who belongs to that to class, that swanky class, wouldn't, wouldn't actually yeah. describe it as that, right? It's more like someone who doesn't usually eat in a fancy restaurant might say, oh, that's a swanky joint. Or she's a swanky broth. Posh bro. is another word. Hmm. <laughs> the swanky broad. <laughs> is that, is, would, would the word broad be politically correct <laughs> nowadays to call a woman a broad? <laughs> Look at those broads over there. It sounds very New York. It sounds like someone in New York with like a thick accent might say that's a swanky broad. Mm. <laughs> it's like that's a fancy woman. <laughs> yeah. Which you guys might call uh, a bird. Nah, we never call it a bird. <laughs> okay, so I the, think that the, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. So the the waiter's gonna bring us bring you to your table. The waiter, the waitress. The if host, it's a woman. the hoster, or hostess, probably usually shows you your table, right? Oh, you're you're right. My bad. And yeah. And then the waiter or waitress comes, or maybe the busboy comes, and they ask you if you would like to start off with some drinks. Yeah, usually, actually, at a good restaurant, and I I haven't found this in, in other countries necessarily, but they bring you water. Definitely in oh, the yeah, United States. Usually, I, always water. I like at least where, where I'm from, like on the water is very important. It's it's yeah. So. Like in Brazil, when I ask, "Can you bring me some like water from?" Um, you have to pay for it. You have to pay extra for it, and that's kind of crappy, I think. Wait, where? In Brazil. Oh, in Brazil, in a lot yeah. of places. Yeah, outside of the US, actually... it's really common. And something else is like um, in the U.S. A lot of times, most of the time, if you order like a a soft drink, so something without alcohol, usually you have free refills, so you can drink as much of it as you want. Which is like outside of the U.S., I've never been anywhere else that has free refills. And you look at look at the state of the people of the United States. Those free roof, free refills are going straight to the hips. <laughs> That's true. You get like people drinking the, the big gulp from Seven Eleven. It's just like a gigantic or the double big gulp. It's like seventy. It's like sixty. Yeah. It's like a couple, sixty-four ounces. Like two, two, two or three liters of like Coke that they're just downing in a day, or less. I want my down. free refill. Damn it. Now, <laughs> Damn what Brazilian. does down mean, Ethan? Damn me in Brazil. <laughs> down means to drink quickly. Could also be kind of like think, to I chug, think... but it doesn't literally, in, in this case, it doesn't literally mean that they're chugging it. It would mean that they are just drinking it kind of in a fast way. To interpret this, to, to translate this to Australian, that's to skull it. To skull it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I understand what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 okay, so... You're gonna get your soft drink, maybe a glass of wine or whatever you want to order. Maybe um, somebody the will come table, over and, and recommend you a good bottle to go with whatever you're gonna be ordering. What kind of food you're gonna be ordering? A nice white yeah. or yeah, red? By, by the by the way, um, does every restaurant have a hostess? Because I've never like I've never really been like escorted to my table unless you guys or maybe in the U.S. culture it is like I mean like I don't. Think in every restaurant you're going to have a hostess, right? It's it's more of the upper class, the the swanky joints, as we said earlier, that have the hostess, right? In the U.S., it's really common. Or you guys, almost even like places you that guys are expensive. Have... If it's sit down, but if it's you guys have food, a lot of just talking over each other. It, but, sure, yeah. But I was going to say is that you guys have a lot of these kind of like chain 
restaurants like Shenanigans or Applebee's and these kinds of places, right? right that are just I'll like French. Yeah, they're kind of these big kind of franchise <laughs> restaurants that have their own system and way of doing stuff, but you don't really find that anywhere else. And it's it's these restaurants that have this kind of system behind it, right? So I would say like about the the host hostess question, like any restaurant that's not fast food that is a sit down restaurant, sit down versus like a, a takeout restaurant, um, will have a host or hostess, even if it's like a what about a diner? Cash, cheaper place yeah it's really common they um, sometimes though you'll see like they'll just have a sign that says seat yourself or sometimes the host or hostess will also be a waiter but it's really common in the US to have someone who their job is just like standing at the front and greeting and seating people hmm interesting okay. we're all learning something here and they usually get they usually get tipped out by the, mm -hmm. the staff often at least to be tipped out means that they get a portion of the tips from the servers or from mm -hmm. the bartender as well. So it's, it's important to understand that the United States is a culture of tips. So maybe in a lot of other countries, there's like a 10% standard tip. Um, but in the United States, a lot of, it's very customary to tip, you know, uh, at least maybe 15, 20%, often 20% on average for good service. Yeah. And yeah. like most of my friends in the U.S. who have waited tables, generally they do not like when foreigners come in because they don't like waiting on foreigners because they have to provide excellent service. But then usually foreigners will only tip like five or ten percent, depending on where they're from. And they don't really understand a lot of times the foreigners that the waiter there is only making like two dollars an hour. Yeah. Because maybe in other countries they get they get a, a base salary that's actually pretty good. Yeah, so, like for example, in Spain, I know it's like um, the culture is more for tipping. It's more like, and it depends if it's like a fancy restaurant or not. But it's the tip is like included in their their uh, wage. But then, like maybe if the service was good, if the person was friendly, like you'd leave whatever change was left over from your from your uh, bill. So, so, if you've um, ever been to the United States, I'm gonna. I'm gonna sorry, you going, Justin? I was going to say, right. maybe if you only experienced waiters and you never tipped, and you walked away with this perception that Americans were just xenophobic and that everybody you met was just <laughs> <laughs> didn't like you, it was because you didn't tip. Yeah, you'll get, you'll definitely get like dirty looks if you don't tip in a restaurant in the U.S. Well, my advice for foreigners traveling to the United States, and uh, I will just say that the expression of "when in Rome" does not apply here. Screw them and their tips, and you know. <laughs> That make the most that of that person uh, the, that just give you excellent service for two dollars an hour exactly <laughs> it's the it's a the problem with their own system therefore why should we foreigners have to suffer <laughs> I so, but on the flip know? side it's important to recognize that that this tipping culture actually creates like very attentive service yeah i was going to say that i think like i actually kind of like that about the american culture is that you get um i find myself in other countries a lot of times the, the waiters aren't very friendly. There's like not really the same experience to dining out. And like a lot of times too, you're, you're left waiting a long time for things or it can be hard to get the waiter's attention. Uh, so in the US it's nice because the waiter is very attentive and you know, in addition to just eating, there's also like an experience there. And a good waiter will kind of balance. They won't maybe be too attentive. They won't interrupt you because I think a bad waiter doesn't really understand the subtlety of it. A good waiter will try to make eye contact with you at the right moment and to not really interrupt your social experience, right? Exactly. It gives you a bit of a back massage when you're feeling a little bit tense, you know, maybe rubs your knee a little bit, you know, just to make sure you had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't actually tend to touch you. But they do come over and they'll ask, like, how is everything? How's all the food? They might even kind of uh, chit chat with you a little bit. Have that happen sometimes. Yeah, it's important for them to build rapport, right? Mm -hmm. So what's rapport? Rapport is kind of like a, a, a sense of emotional connection that you have to somebody, like a, a feeling of comfort that you have in, in a social experience with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. So and, and all, that these, all these swanky restaurant goers are enslaving these, these waiters to, <laughs> to fal falsify their niceness and be extra polite <laughs> to, their, to their extra... Uh, 
rich patrons so they can get an extra buck or two. I'm not sure if I agree with that, gents. It's more than a, it's more than an extra buck or two. Yeah. Depends on the restaurant. Then. I'm just pulling your leg. Um, anyway, you might uh, something something else that goes along with this is there's like a very which we're gonna move into I think some some more vocabulary for like ordering and stuff. There's kind of a more formal way of speaking in restaurants than you might find in just like a normal having a conversation with a friend situation or or talking to your family in English. Yeah. I know we've lost Justin. And what would that way be? I think he got really hungry yeah. and left us to go uh, grab a bite to eat. <laughs> <laughs> what would what would be the what would be the more what would be the more formal way of speaking in that case then? Because I don't think for me, when I go to restaurants here in Australia, I don't think we really change the way we speak at all. It's very friendly and just normal. Like you, I'll speak to any, well, anyone else. So you wouldn't uh, ask for something any different than you might ask your your mother for something. Um, no, I think we treat everyone equally here. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, restaurant, because I think there's, like I said, eating out. There's a whole kind of experience there. It's, so it's like. Um, you would speak a little bit differently usually. You'd say like the waiter might ask you like, can I start you off with some drinks? Not um, You might hear as well them just ask you what would you like to drink, but generally you hear like a, a slightly more formal version of like, can I start you off with some drinks before you order food? Or some appetizers. Or some appetizers, yeah. Can I start you off with some drinks, appetizers? Or d'oeuvres. Appetizers are those hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, that's a fancy French way of saying it. I don't even know how to spell it, though. It's it's like horde overs or something like that. If you, if you, just, <laughs> if you were to read it phonetically in English, um, and so they you're saying they they use more like um, formal kind of versions of like the the like motor verbs like may I may I start you off? Could I do this? Would I? So it's kind of a little bit subservient yeah. communication. I don't know if it's subservient because like you kind of speak in a similar way. Uh, to them, you say like, "Can I have?" or "I would like," like I would like a, I would like a bottle of red wine. I would like a glass of, of red wine. I would like uh, beer. And usually in the U.S., you'll have like a big menu, so you won't just say. It. You just have to actually tell them which one you want. That's an important um, note there, Ethan. I think you're saying because we usually ask, and I think we're excessively polite when we ask for food from a server, right? Or yeah. if you, even you if you go to McDonald's or something, you do the same thing. Yeah. It's like, can I have? When instead of like, give me, I think yeah. that can be kind of like, um, it can be kind of brash. I notice more like in Latin cultures too, if you were to translate directly, usually they say like, uh, give me or I want. In the uh -huh. US, we'd say more like, I would like or may I have, can I have. So like, people will have to say, before. I'll have. Or well, I'll have. I'll have, the, I'll have the fish. Or something. I'll have the Something too we could bring up is like I'll take. You could you could also say like I'll take the salmon. I'll take a martini. Um, that's one of the few occasions where you can use take with food because I know there's a lot of uh, people say I you know like um, I I took um, I'm going to take lunch with a friend later, which we don't say I'm going to. We use have for that case. I'm going to have lunch with a friend. And in this case, it's it's because you're you're actually making a choice, right? So you can even go to another store, for example. Um, you know, even if you're buying like clothes, you know, I'll take mm -hmm. the, the, the white socks mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. It's not the best example, but, <laughs> but you wouldn't say like, um, I took a cappuccino with a friend. You'd say I had a cappuccino with a friend, mm -hmm. I had a coffee with a friend. I took the Coke. No, I have the Coke. Um, so, like using but, using that aisle, the future tense, or using other modal verbs can add like politeness there. Yeah, you're right. It is a it is a, like just an extra level of I think any kind of service. Like if any if you're talking to anyone in any kind of uh, even if if it's not a restaurant, if you're at like a, a hardware store or any kind of retail store, maybe you say, "Oh, I would like to you know I would like to try that shirt on." Could I try that? Or can I can I use the restroom? Can I do this? Could I? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. May I think if we use may, it sounds a little too. Maybe that's a little subservient. Like may I? It's like you're asking for permission. 
Mm -hmm. may, may I use the toilet? The toilet. <laughs> I know you you made a video on this one, Ethan. Yeah. Is toilet the appropriate word, or is it? Is there a different word we should use? It depends. In the UK, they use the word toilet, and it's fine. At least I don't know in restaurant settings, but at least like if you're asking someone on the street or whatever, like where's the toilet? That's completely okay to me. How as, like an American, it sounds How it sounds uncouth. uncouth yeah. <laughs> so in the, uncouth in the UK, is it, it's kind of a swanky word for um, something that doesn't. It sounds like very dirty, impol right? Impolite. Yeah. It's a little bit impolite, or um, I would say like, where's the bathroom? Where's the restroom? I think restroom is the appropriate word in the restaurant. Yeah. A woman might say, I need to powder my nose <laughs> as a way to excuse themselves from the table to go use the restroom. Or you might say um, another expression that's pretty good is like, where's the little boy's room or where's the little girl's room? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't use that one, but I've heard, I've heard it used. <laughs> well, because if you shave your beard, people will think you are a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, moving along. What do we got next? <laughs> um, okay, so we were talking about just kind of like the more formal language when you order things in English. So avoid saying like "I want" or "Give me." Uh, and the waiter might ask you after asking you what drink or appetizers. Uh, perhaps, do you want super salad? And if you ordered a salad, what might they ask, Justin? Since you were a waiter. Dressing. Wait, did you say I'll have the. I've, I confuse this all the time, and when I was a waiter, people confused it too. Super salad? <laughs> They'd be like, salad. yeah, I'll have the super salad. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the That's super the salad. Page. Super, super salad. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the soup or the salad. Yeah, would you like dressing, or what kind of dressing would you like? Yeah, what kind of dressing would you like? So learn those dressings. Yeah. We have lots of them in the States. You might ask, well, you might ask too, yeah. uh, what, kind of, that, what kind of dressings do you have? Because every restaurant has different dressings. Just so people know what a dressing is, it's a, uh, it's a flavored, um, it's a different flavor kind of sauce or sometimes an oil kind of based liquid that you put on, uh, on salad just to give it some extra flavor. Like there's, what are some common ones? Is always like, like people often put like balsamic vinegar and, and olive oil on, on, on salad, but you can yeah. have um, some cream based Ranch. ones. Ranch. I don't know what that is. Ranch. Ranch. You, okay. You don't know what ranch Vine is? Vinaigrette. Oh, okay. Wow. Ranch is very American. Uh, Thousand Island. Like Thousand Island. Thousand Island is like a, it's like the, I think a mix between ketchup and mayonnaise. Maybe with some yeah. other things in there. Yeah. Oh, it's always like a, a you know, Parmesan and some kind of a cheesy based one too. It's always pretty good. I generally go for that one. You go for the cheesiness, huh? Yeah. And as we move along to the main dish, you might ask, you know, what does what does this come with? You might say like, mm -hmm. um, what ingredients does it have? Yeah. Um, is is it spicy? Ask, you might um, tell them even before ordering or just when you sit down, you might say, I'm allergic to something. Or you might ask, um, mm -hmm. as we said before, when you were on the phone, you might ask this when you sit down, do you have a gluten-free menu? Or do you have like a vegetarian menu? Do you have a kid's menu? Give that to Justin so you can get a PB&J. <laughs> PB&J? <laughs> PB&J is a What's peanut that? butter and jelly sandwich. This is a very classic oh. American. Sounded sounds dish. sounded a little bit sexual, like a PB and J. <laughs> <laughs> like what does PB and J mean, Chad? <laughs> Apparently, it means uh, <laughs> uh, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Mr. B, I'm not. I don't know what that means. <laughs> a BJ or yeah. a PB and J? A BJ. A BJ is a blowjob. <laughs> Okay, and a PB and J. PB and J is a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Sandwich. Yes, very good stuff. Not, to be Not something with you the typically other. order in a restaurant unless you're under ten years old. It goes really good with milk too. <laughs> you need the milk to get the peanut butter dislodged. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along. Uh, you you might ask them. Go ahead. Sorry, 
I was going to say you might ask them to like uh, certain dishes, like just to figure out if it's what you want to order. You might ask them, is that spicy? Or you might ask them if it comes with, if it has something certain with it, or if it has something that you might be allergic to. Mm -hmm. You might say like, I'm allergic to peanuts. Sometimes, sometimes you have an, uh, a selection of sides as well, right? Like you mm -hmm. can choose, oh, would you like the similar to, would you like soup or salad? It's like, would you like the salad or French fries or chips or, or whatever the, the side? Sometimes the side is, is interchangeable, right? Mm -hmm. Also known as um, a la carte, right? This is another French term. Yeah, you can get like, well, that would be like getting a side separate, right? Mm -hmm. You get a side to a la carte. Yeah. Hmm. And we say I side don't... because it's often called a side dish. It would be the side dish. It's like a smaller portion that full term that is along the main the main dish. So yeah, something that just just complements curiosity. the the main thing. If if the waiter comes along, you, you're not interested in having any more. Say let's say that that um you've eaten all that you can eat. How would you respond? I'm stuffed. I'm full. Yeah, I'm stuffed. I'm, might actually, is over. I'm stuffed. Might be a little bit rude, actually. To use I'm satisfied is, is is that something we use in the in the states? I would not say that. I think it sounds very uh, it sounds very much like a Latin translation. What about in Australia? Uh, sorry, I need to sneeze. <coughs> yeah. um, well, Justin, interesting question. Uh, I would say I'm done. Thank you very much. I would not say satisfied because satisfied would make you think that I'm happy with. The amount of food I'm, I'm satisfied with the amount of food you've given me or i'm satisfied with the level of spiciness i'm possibly also satisfied with the whole meal in general yeah or was with the a, service was that a satisfactory response to the question about how to use satisfied <laughs> in a meal pretty good i might say like i'm good yeah um, i would use that a lot they they, they come over usually after you've, you've finished and taken your, after they've taken your plates They'll usually ask, do you want anything for dessert? Can I can I offer you a dessert? Would they say good or would they say done? Would you say I'm done? Because the waiter would say, hey, are you done? They wouldn't say, are you good? No, I'm no but they never they never ask you, are you done? They ask you, do you want any dessert? Can I offer you a dessert? Because they want to sell you more. They don't want mm -hmm. you to be done. <laughs> okay. But I would okay. say I would say in that case as well. I would if they ask like usually when they offer dessert, I say I'm good. Because uh, we were actually going to talk about briefly that in the U.S. the portions of meals are much bigger generally than in other countries. So like usually I'm very I'm very full after the meal, so I would just say I'm good. It was delicious. Thank you. Okay. So I find myself asking, and it's kind of hard to even translate sometimes. Is it filling? You know how filling is it? You know what's the serving size? Because uh, I'm. I'm pretty tall, and so when I go to Brazil, sometimes the 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 serving size is maybe small, and so I, I ask sometimes like, is it filling? How filling mm -hmm. is it? And what does that mean, Ethan? It just means is it um, that's kind of like will it satisfy my hunger? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be enough to actually leave me satisfied with, uh, or is it going to leave me still hungry for more? Okay, and so what if you eat your meal and then there's still some left over and you want to keep it? You might say, depending on the joint, you might say, uh, can I get a doggy bag? But if it's a little bit classier place, you might say, this is the United States. Apparently they don't say doggy bag outside of the United States. You might ask for a box or can I get this to go? Yeah. It's, can I get this wrapped up? I've heard of doggy bag, but I've, I've never actually used that. It's never seemed appropriate to me. Already. But yeah, I've used it before, but I, I think it's like more mid range to lower class joint. Yeah, I, I usually say, Can I get that to go? Can I get can that I get to boxed go? up? Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so it's like you can use different phrasal verbs as well boxed up, wrapped up. Mm -hmm. So they'll bring the at that point, you can often um, signal the waiter. This is a, I, th I think it's a universal signal. I'm, I don't know, but you can. You can do the check sign in the air, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing uh, it in the air on the like video. Yeah. yeah. And so it looks, they're like gonna, it looks like you're signing your signature. Yeah. And if they're attentive, 
they'll be kind of like aware of what's going on over there and you should be able to get it pretty quick. Yeah. I think usually in the States too, like I don't find myself often having to do that when I eat out. Generally, when you ask, uh, sorry, when they ask if you want dessert, yes or no, um, but like usually if you say no, you'd be like, no, uh, can we just get the bill? Mm -hmm. Or the so chef, a right? Good opportune time just to say like, no, we're finished. Um, we'll just take the bill. Yeah, and maybe you might say like, can you can you split the check? Yeah, right? can we so split the check? Split it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the U.S., I think that's also a lot more common than in other countries. Usually, in many other countries, I've found that they want you to figure it out. They want you to split the check. But in the U.S., they'll actually, if you ask them to, they will split it up and bring separate checks. And often, if you have more than I think it's six people, but you might want to check on that gratuity which is like the, the service. So these are different ways for, to say the tip. Gratuity, service, and tip is included. So they might charge you automatically 18% because a lot of times on big tables, nobody re really takes responsibility mm -hmm. for the tip. And so people often leave less and the waiter gets screwed. And so <laughs> they'll, they'll make it automatic on larger, larger tables. And so that's included. So the size, be aware of that. The size depends on the restaurant. They they said that some places don't do six people or ten people or something like that that they automatically add it in. And also just be aware, like check the actual bill when you get the bill, see if it's got gratuity, and don't get confused with the tax because they add in tax at the end as well. If you're confused at all, just ask. Just make sure. Not, not Remember, okay. They're making, it's not tip in the they're, US. They're, they're making two dollars an hour. And I've had I had one one um, table of foreigners from somewhere. I don't know. That was my <laughs> that was my attitude that night. At least Well depending and, depending on where the foreigner comes from, two dollars an hour could be a pretty good salary for them. Yeah, but I was tipping out <laughs> the bartender. And so I actually lost money on this table. Like I was paying to serve them. And so it ended up being a pretty disappointing table. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're offering excellent service, you know, if you're actually a really good waiter. Yeah, so just be aware of that. Like, look into the local tipping cultures. Like in Australia, what is it like there, Chad? I don't go to restaurants. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously can't remember. I don't think we tip. I think it's all just, you know, a way to get a salary, like a normal job. They're not slaves to to you know impressing other people and rubbing shoulders and making other people feel special <laughs> like you Americans need this special kind of uh, uh, ego stroking waiters <laughs> well that's probably uh, a good I don't place really to uh, I, I don't really know that's probably a good place to, I honestly uh, don't know yeah to wrap wrap this up to maybe go? we yeah, could it's like in the show notes, maybe we could um, link to an article that I wrote a while ago that will teach you a lot more about this, about how to order coffee, eggs, and meat, because that's some specialized vocabulary as well. And, and like, we're you can see more of those so, questions. So we don't teach that anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay extra for we that. Like, how would you, is that the, uh, the egg thing? Is that the joke when it's like, hey, baby, how would you like your eggs? Uh, I don't know that one. Oh. It's kind of it's kind of <laughs> vulgar. I'm not sure if I should say it now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave them hanging with that uh, one. Shit. Okay. Next week, uh, if you guys want to know the um, the actual joke of <laughs> "Hey, baby, how do you want your eggs?" Feel free to send me an email and ask me more about or give us some more suggestions for upcoming podcasts. You can contact me, Chad at reallifeglobal.com. Justin at reallifeglobal.com. Ethan at reallifeglobal.com. There you have it. Now you can all go to the United States and dine out in swanky joints and be like Romans whilst, um, <laughs> what are some other stuff we did today? You're generously tipping your waiters. While, <laughs> whilst generally tipping the waiters, getting um, optimal service and having just a, a, a great time of drinking 10 liters of refilled Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Being left very satisfied with the whole experience.
Yeah. Hey, last question I have for you guys too about um about the culture there in the US is also because I've noticed here in um I because I went out to dinner. I'm not sure if this is a thing with my parents or if it's a cultural thing here. But like we go to the restaurant and I'm more accustomed to like going there, having a few drinks, talking for like a little while, then maybe thinking about ordering an entree. It's more like a, a full experience. And I'm at a restaurant for an hour or two, you know, maybe even mm -hmm. longer. But my folks like, okay, we're here. We'll have that for the entree. That's the main meal. And they already know what they're getting. And they're out of there within you know 30 minutes. I'm like, shit. In the US, it's about maybe like an hour or so. But it's it's definitely faster than other places I've been like in in Spain they take it slow I think the the French are famous for like having like four hour meals just they really take their time enjoy the conversation yeah well let me so, offer a waiter's perspective okay. the waiter's perspective is get out of there so they can fill the table yeah exactly <laughs> the waiters are trying to get you in and out as fast as they can because they make more but money I, that way. I'd say the nice balance is to enjoy and um and like hang out a little bit but don't spend all day there. Yeah, in the U.S. too, they, they start much like this podcast. Yeah. What you say, Nathan? All right. I was gonna say in the U.S. they might start kind of like hinting that you should leave just by like if you don't ask for the bill, they'll bring it over and they'll just say like whenever you're ready, in kind of a polite way. But that's kind of their way of mm -hmm. saying, okay, you guys should think about uh, moving along. <laughs> like. Oh, it was getting kind of late. I'm getting kind of tired. And they're like pointing to their watch and like. Yeah. Or they might say like, well, guys, do you want um... any after dinner drinks? <laughs> any uh, dessert? Any coffee? Keep asking if you want more stuff. If you're not, if you're just sitting there. Mm. So if you do want to just hang out, you should at least maybe order a coffee or dessert or something. Yeah. All right. So um, no dilly dallying at restaurants, or you could get a bit of a some, some few. Uh, horrid looks from the waiters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, that was today's podcast. Hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, like always, you will hear from us next week here at Real Life Radio. One, two, three. Oh. Oh.